That's it. We're rolling. This is it. <laughs> Episode number 421 of No Laugh Track Podcast. I am here with a guy who normally is here every year. Uh, and then 2020 happened, and you didn't show up. <laughs> I don't even know if you were ever scheduled. <laughs> but Kostaki Economopolis is here. We've done, I forgot to look, we've done multiple of these things. Going back to year one it's of this podcast. I, I I would venture to guess that I'm at least in the running for the most appearances on this. Not the most. That's Tim Slagle. Is he it? It's two a year. He, oh, it's he gets two a year. Week, plus, he gets his crash and burn. Oh, week. that's a big drop off to second place then. Yeah, it is. Okay. And enough. also, your close buddy, Brian Miller. Also regular, right? Might be a slightly oh, ahead yeah. of you. All you're right. very close to the top. I might there. be at the back end of the top five then. Okay. I, I think so. Okay. I think I'll take so. it. Yeah. No no rewards for top five. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been looking forward to this. I'm glad you're back. Yeah, man. And uh yeah, last year what so let's let's cover that real quickly. So oh. you weren't here last year. I was occasionally doing podcasts when okay. Acme was open. Okay. Uh how were things looking for you? Versus, I mean, I'm sure I, we can. Ima- I can imagine how they turned out, but how were things supposed to look for you in 2020? How were they supposed to go? Well, they're supposed to be great, and me telling jokes and building a brand and running around. Yeah, it didn't. None of that. <laughs> I just stayed home for a year and a half. It's my first flight this week in a year and a half. Get out of here. Which is weird for a comic to n- never be in an airport. It was felt so unnatural. Holy cow! Yeah. So we really just went away for a while we we literally packed up our stuff and put it in a pod and left LA for several months and went back south we went we kind of bounced back and forth between my mom and my mother-in-law's place in Georgia and Florida oh no kidding yeah it was actually pretty cool those two ladies were great to us and they were both like elderly women who lived by themselves and were totally alone and we, you know, brought them COVID desperate yeah, yeah that's right we desperately needed a break from what we were doing and and so we just left for a while, and uh, now we moved back to LA since. But uh, we took several months to just kind of go away and just just do the family stuff and hide from the world and kind of wait it out, you know. No kidding. Yeah. yeah oh, that's pretty, awesome. It was pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Boy, I. I uh... Oh, that's great. That's I mean, it was challenging and weird, but it was also cool. <laughs> yeah. So you hadn't been on a plane, but you probably had never spent that much time with your mom in, in a long time. I'm right. imagining. Yeah, that was cool. Actually, I, it was good. Great to see mom. Yeah. And it was and it was even nicer sometimes when I could drop off my wife and kid with her mom and come back to my mom and not have a kid for a few beats, you know. Yes. Because I love a kid, but when it's every minute of every day, it's too much. It's too many minutes. It's all the minutes. <laughs> it's you're full overflowing minutes. Uh, yesterday I came home from uh, doing some work and my wife was uh, needed to leave right away. She, I think I just told you before we started recording here, my mom's, my mom, my wife is still working from home. She needed to run into the office, whatever. She was like, should I bring the baby with or stay here with you or what? what? I'm like, I, she can, uh, well anyway, she ended up taking her with. And I mean, this was in within five minutes of me getting home. So my mother-in-law, who provides daycare, was still there. My wife and daughter left immediately. My mother mother-in-law looks at me and she goes, "You have an hour to yourself. What are you gonna do?" <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and talk to you, lady. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Well, you could. Uh, uh, I'll see you tomorrow." And um, I'm not sure, but yeah. It's funny that you're pointing this out to me, and yeah, it's I think the first everyone, thing I thought. Everyone has some version of this, you know. It's yeah. Just like I, I really, I genuinely, this is not an exaggeration. Like being a part of Zoe's life and watching her grow up is one of the privileges of my life. But it's also it's too much in the pandemic because when I signed up to be a parent, it was clearly in the contract that I would leave to go on the road, <laughs> and that there would be parents and grandparents and school and babysitters, and we had none of that for a year plus. So the metaphor that I've been stumbling around with, I don't know if this is the perfect way to say it, but I feel like I had a nice bowl of grits and then I got some sriracha, you know, put like a little, and then the pandemic came and the top of the sriracha came off and I can't taste the grits anymore. (laughs) I just want my grits back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. So this is a big, this week is a big step towards getting my grits back. (laughs) Why isn't that on a (laughs) t-shirt? I want my grits back. I want my grits back. <laughs> so uh, how will we're one day into this week at Acme? Yeah. How was it? It was so great. Yeah. It was so great. I am doing something which I have never done before, which makes it extra scary. Uh, I'm doing a whole new hour. I've 
decided not to do any of the jokes from the before times. Yeah. And so not only was I really rusty just broadly, but I'm doing all new jokes. So it was really terrifying, actually. Um, I did two headline sets in Fresno about three weeks ago. Okay. And otherwise, I've done almost no live stand-up in a year and a half. I did do some Zoom stuff, and I did work really hard at building that, and I did a lot of radio. And so I've been kind of building towards this happening. Okay. But until it all comes together and it actually exists in a plane by itself, it did. I didn't know if it could happen. So I, the first show in Fresno was, this is a little cheesy sounding, but it was one of the great achievements of my professional life. Yeah. To do a new hour of comedy that I'd really, for the most part, never done all in the same moment. It was kind of spectacular. Wow. And so last night was a big step towards like kind of, you know, really figuring out the beats and learning kind of so much of the work. I mean, I did tons of the writing work and the other developmental work, but so much of a wor- of the work of building an hour is doing it on stage. And I just haven't had enough of that yet. No. I, so were you, do you slide like a new joke in here or there when you're doing your uh, football talk on a radio show? Well, actually, I ended up doing, because I didn't have gigs, I ended up doing the radio segment year-round instead of half of the year. And so I would do chunks of it that way. I would do, like, you know, Father's Day, I did the chunk about my dad. And then I did a chunk about this story about me as an adolescent with a fantasy about my English teacher, you know. So I sort of, like, different times I would do chunks. And I would do the same thing with Tom Bernard and a couple of other places. Yeah. And so that was like part of the develop, developmental process. You know, it was cool. Nice. When when a new idea comes to mind, this is something I've been asking a lot recently um, because I have my little notes everywhere. I'm not writing jokes, but I'm writing things down like to talk about on the podcast and things I'm like, you know, just save a lot of crap. I also have a poor memory, so this is how I just Yeah, yeah, me stuff. too. <laughs> uh, but where do you do it? Do you carry around a little notepad, your phone, write it on your hand? Where, okay. where do you keep stuff? Mostly at this point it's Google Docs, and then I the phone is the transfer mechanism. I'll type little notes, and then I'll get it into there, and that's sort of home base for it. Uh, and then it morphs and changes, and you sort of save it at a certain point, and then you kind of come back to that, and then you keep – it's this constant accordion of moving and changing and growing and building and subtracting. Sure. And, uh, so that's my current process. Okay. Yeah. How close did you, how, how much time did you actually do last night? 45, 55? Yeah. Last night was like 50, 50 plus. Yeah. It felt right. Yeah. I mean, I had some other chunks I didn't do, which I could have done. And there were a few chunks I did do, which in retrospect I could have left out, you know. So that's the process that okay. I'm in now, you know. Sure. The crowd was really nice and great. And and the two comics in front of me, Brian and Mo, are just, you know, they're fantastic comics. So it's it's cool to just be here and just, just dive into the whole thing again. It's sure. Been- Not only did uh, Brian did the podcast with you when we were here last time, but I think Mo opened, uh, I think he was the host last time as well. Is that right? I think so. I definitely knew Mo, and I couldn't place where and when. I just uh, I know the essence and some of the jokes. I'm like, I know this guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was a. I listened back, and there was a brief discussion about the uh, your names, your name versus his, and like you made a comment like, I'm actually on a bill with someone with maybe a more difficult name for people to pronounce. <laughs> that's right. His I full did, name. I remember that name. Yes, M- Multisham Sham. Oh, that's something right. Like that, right. Multisham Yakub. Oh, yeah. you're right. I uh-huh. totally remember that now. Yeah. yeah, you're right. And last night, one of the contest guys had a crazy ethnic uh, African name. Uh, Atu? Atai? Oh. Help me. <laughs> he was, Brandon was on uh, He was on a trip. He wasn't here. Some so version of, uh, some of, uh, of Ata Ak- Akitimbo or something. Something super ethnic, like like economopolis for no reason too much we get it we get it we're ethnic <laughs> for no reason knock it off knock it off with that crap for good reason yeah for good reason but uh other things that have changed since the last time you were here uh this is kind of interesting brian miller at two years ago when you, you guys were here uh he was hosting an open mic at a bar that no longer exists <laughs> <laughs> like we could go drive by there right now, well, and it's an empty building. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised so, that didn't happen even more. Yeah, oh, I, and we're a thousand times thankful that didn't happen to Acme. That's right. And but one change to Acme is uh, the 
the open mic night is now Tuesdays. And I did it. Mondays. I came in early. You did. I did. I actually flew Tuesday because I didn't want to fly on the first big headline night. Right on. So I'm like, you know what? I'll go early. I'll do the open mic, and that'll help me kind of get my feet wet. They, they gave you two minutes? I, <laughs> they, I got seven. Good, good. And good. I opened for Brian Miller, so it was kind of fun. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Brian closed it out. Nice. So what, <laughs> when's the last time you did something like that? You know, you know, an open mic somewhere. You know what? I did a couple uh, like a month ago because I was, I was worried I wouldn't remember how to hold a microphone and like fall down. You know, like I literally am that rusty as far as being a stand-up. Yeah. Uh, so I did do a few. There's there's a weird thing that exists now that I didn't even know about, and actually my wife turned me on to this. Like there's these place there's a place in L.A. that you can it does an open mic every hour on the hour. Uh huh. And it's five dollars to do it, and you can go in the middle of the day. And I like, I like spent twenty bucks, and I did four five minute sets in four hours, like from two to six. Who's who? That's who's, that's exactly right. Who's doing this? It's insane, but that's a thing that exists now in some of the big cities. Does that money then flip over to the audience to show up and watch? No, there's no audience. <laughs> no audience. It's all comics watching each other. It's Weird. horrific. It's one of the most horrific comedy experiences ever. <laughs> but it but it was interesting. I've never even seen something like that, and so it was cool to experience it. And also just to stand there with some of the process of being a comic with the jokes that are somewhat together, but the process not together. Just to do that, and then I'm like, oh, okay, I know, I know what I'm doing. But and there was enough people there to get some feedback and everything. Well, there's no people. No. It's only comedians. That's what I mean. But the other, <laughs> there's no people, only comedians. <laughs> well, I need to be clear here: people are not comedians, and vice versa. Yeah, right? no. In this context, there, there are no people, so it's very <laughs> weird. Wow, that's strange. It's only useful for extreme situations of being really brand new. And needing to just try it all, or being rusty and just wanting to make sure that I I didn't fall off a cliff. Sure. So it was fun. And now this is something we've probably talked about in the past. I'm just not remembering it right now. But what job? What were you doing to bring in money before you went to comedy full time? What did you have to sort of leave? What did you have to transition? Oh out of? yeah. Well, I did it. I I began really early. I basically. When I was in graduate school, I was studying to be a political science professor. Yeah. And I had to turn down a couple of paid gigs to work on my master's thesis. And I was like, "Why well, this is, feels terrible. Oh, wow. So okay. I just hung in there and got my degree. I got a master's degree in political science, uh, American election sort of expertise kind of thing. And then I saved all my books and moved home with my folks and went on the road pretty immediately. So I had a I had a couple of temp jobs where I could like work for three or four days when I didn't have a gig. And then I were I did some phone work at the Black Comedy Club in Atlanta for a while. What what is what? Yeah. There was a there's a place called Uptown Comedy Corner, which uh -huh. is one of those exactly what you think it is, like it, when when I went, occasionally went to do a set there, it it was I was not welcome. <laughs> like I was not what they expected. It was a very specifically black comedy club. Mm -hmm. um, so I I knew the booker because he booked some other like mainstream rooms. Yeah. And so I came and I did some work for him. So basically, I finished my degree. I had a summer of screwing around with some buddies, and then I was just temping a little bit for about five or six months. Before okay. I was on the road pretty much full time. Now, again, this was a different era. It, most of the clubs were t were Monday through Saturday or Tuesday to Sunday. And I would sometimes take the car and be gone for five weeks in a row. And But working most of the Every time. Every night, pretty yeah. much. I'd go to Orlando and Oklahoma and Michigan, and I wouldn't even come back. I would just go. Isn't that interesting? And now most of the clubs, this is a rare exception, actually. Most of the clubs are weekends only. I'm or, hearing that more and more. Or Thursday to Saturday or something. So it would be harder to pull that off now. But at the time, and also when you're new, you're working lower-end clubs, and so most of them had apartments and not hotels, and so you could just stay in between sure. for the extra day. Nobody cared. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and then you're off to Oklahoma or whatever. Yeah, so I, I, had, I had kind of a short work window because I was, I was a teaching assistant in grad school. I was really my last real job job. I was okay. 
teaching kids about political science. Uh, and then I kind of was on the road pretty soon after that. Okay. Yeah. At what point during the pandemic were you like, maybe I should pick up a, a shift at the uh, the local college teaching kids yeah. political science? <laughs> it was funny. I, we talked about a lot of things, and we went for the just – hide enough and and not spend any until we could get back to our regular lives there you go uh we got some unemployment and some assistance here and there and we put our stuff in storage and stopped paying rent for five or six months and i launched a comedy football brand so i kind of used the time to kind of get some things done and i was clearly like working on the next hour and so I just tried to hide from the world until the world was ready for us to come back. And, you know, it was tough financially, but and it was but it was a great adventure and it was lots of extra family time and you know, some of it was cool. Did you have to help with any uh homeschooling? Distance learning? Not as such. I mean, you know, you're dealing with uh a twelve year old who's not in school was weird and then Yeah. Of course, you know, our other kid is two and doesn't even know there's a pandemic, you know. Right. For her, it was kind of convenient timing, I guess. It was brutal for me, though. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting those grapes in half every fucking day. <laughs> all, you know, you know, all of those things that it takes to keep a toddler alive. It's pretty labor intensive, man. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. You know, takes yes. a lot of doing. Mm hmm. Yeah. Actually, we just took a, I took my first flight um, in several years uh, a couple weeks ago and i went to sort of your part of the uh, part of the country i went to south carolina oh yeah so pretty close to where you're from yeah i'd never been in that area before yeah and i will t- i want to tell you my l- quick little story here okay we got there and we're like well let's get some beers so we go to the liquor store oh sunday no it was a thursday oh but you're buying little tiny bottles we go into the liquor store <laughs> and we're looking around and there's no beer Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. They don't sell beer in the same store that they sell booze. Yeah, you South know what's Carolina. weird? That's not that unusual state to state. They have all these weird rules. And a lot of grocery stores, depending on the state, have beer and wine but can't sell liquor. This one had beer and wine. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I went, I, and so I, they let, we left, went to the grocery store. I found a huge selection of beer. I went to self-checkout with my beer, which I've never done before. Uh, self-checkout. Okay. Uh, and then the woman who, I think she did check my ID. Then she said, oh, have you taken a look at the bar over here? We have a lot of great beers on tap. And I look over, and yeah, the grocery store has a bar. What? And then she goes, yeah, and you know, if you come back, feel free to grab one while you're shopping. Yes. Now that I've never heard of. They encourage drinking at this grocery store, <laughs> and they even have a sign at the door reminding you that you can't leave the building. Like, no open bottles outside. Oh, but right. But inside, in- wow, not only acceptable, encouraged. Now, you'll be interested to know, in the old days in South Carolina, I think they've changed this, the bars, they had this really strict, crazy, old-fashioned law about those little airplane bottles. They couldn't. They didn't serve liquor in bars out of regular sized bottles. You had to buy the little bottles. It was some kind of a, you know, restriction against overpouring. So when you bought it like a mixed drink, you had to. You're kind of purchasing like a Coke and a tiny liquor bottle. Yeah. And if you wanted something like a Long Island iced tea, you just kill yourself because you can't. <laughs> That just can't be done in a re- in a reasonable way with that construct. <laughs> no, I bet not. Yeah, every place has the laws are insane. It's it's state to state and even region to region. Sometimes they're weird. Yeah, I just thought like, what what are we like? Oh, us delinquents from Minnesota. Like, yeah, I know. Expect it in the same place. Hey, here's one for you. Tommy Johnigan and I did some road gigs together years ago. We went on this crazy tour. Pierre, South Dakota has one of the weirdest setups ever. It's a city that's split by a river. Okay. Most of the city is on one side of the river, and the bars close at, I want to say, one. But on the other side of the river, they're up until two. And they had so many problems with the drinking and driving and the chaos that, that, it, that ensued that they had a trolley that would pick people up at closing time at one, <laughs> And take them across the river. This is awesome. It's so cool. Tommy and I are in this bar in Pier, South Dakota, after the show. And all the bars closed down at the same time. And then you go outside and a magic trolley 
takes you away to a place that has one more hour of drinking. <laughs> Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. It was so weird. And that bar on the other side of the river is mostly a bar, but also a strip club. I was going to say, you are going to say strip club. Yep. Ah! It was a terrible strip club. It was mostly a bar, but it was a very entertaining, insane situation. But, uh, was the name of the place like Adequates? <laughs> <laughs> it was like no competition. <laughs> what else are you going to do? Huh? Take the magic trolley to the shittiest strip club in the world. Yeah. It was so fun. What, what better experience for me and Tommy Ryman to have together? Um, <laughs> is that part of the summer tour? Will you be heading back? To- <laughs> I haven't been to Pier in a long time, but yeah, I should go back. <laughs> now I want to look that up and see if that still exists. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely want to know that. Well, so we should mention. Um, I don't want to get too far ahead. The you mentioned it, the All Pro Lines. All Pro Lines. Yeah, it's a comedy it's where pro football and pro comedians collide. Yeah, it's great. It's fun. It's football jokes and memes and. We're still building, we're still learning how what to do and what people like and what I like to do and but it's it's basically football jokes. Yeah. And it's uh NFL oriented comedy of all ilks. And I've got a bunch of comics who are contributing jokes and I'm writing constantly and posting stuff. Right this month we're in the middle of a meme for every team. So every day of the week there's a new meme and we're going alphabetical from bears to guess who's last? Uh, the Vikings. It would be, except now there's a team with no mascot. Oh. <laughs> and so they are last. Yeah. The Washington football team. The Washington team. team. Are they going to do something about, like, what, apparently well, they're how are they moving forward with that? They're going to wait another year, apparently. I don't know what they're doing. It makes no sense to me, but. For a league that's so much about, you know, we got 8,000 new jerseys that we're going to sell know, and it's throw insane. on. This is the Thursday jersey. This is the throwback jersey. <laughs> this is the retro throwback <laughs> jersey. This is the glow-in-the-dark throwback I jersey. I know. I know. So here's the pitch to the to the viewer. Yes. Not only is it professional comedians doing good comedy about football, it's not just some jackass with a meme page, right? It's, we're, we're pros at what we do. Yes. But there's also an open door for the people to contribute jokes. Yes, I'm and, glad you're saying this. And that part has really surprised me. The the not not just the the quantity of the input, but the quality of the input has it's the thing that surprised me the most. Some people really submit funny lines. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll sometimes do a fill in the blank joke, whatever yeah, it is. Them. The Cowboys got hard knocks. The best thing about that is blank. And then you get like 97 responses and 45 of them are kind of funny. And 10 of them are really funny. And three of them are jokes like I'm jealous I didn't write them. So the 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 people have been, you know, the peanut gallery is pretty good. It's been a real cool surprise. I've seen them on Facebook, and I know they also have an Instagram account, right? Right, and Twitter. Those are the big three. And that's where that's where we started. Okay, and I've got the web address, but not a site yet, and uh, may or may not go to TikTok. But right now, the three major social media platforms is are enough. These, are these something that you worry are going to like? are so easily stolen like hey my no in fact in the, the like, short i mean run, you could easily grab that I and mean, i put it on my site don't give you any credit you people are yeah, laughing their asses that off that becomes a problem when you're a successful monster at this point being stolen would be great and some of them are watermarked so that you kind of okay. hope that they get they get borrowed yeah, and yeah, shared yeah. and that's actually the best way to spread the word and that's why meme for every team is fun because everyone has a friend who's a Cowboys fan, you can tag him. Yes. Or you're, you're a shitty team, yep. you repost that one and share it and retweet. And so that's the reason that we do that is to kind of help spread the word of what the thing is. So, yeah, at this point, it's you want to be stolen. Yeah. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. And I listened to, I think, the three probably most recent episodes of your podcast. Oh, cool. Quick Snaps. You do your homework, man. Of course. I actually, I think I skipped around a little bit because I saw that did our buddy Tim Harmston did one in the last couple months. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot that. Yeah. So I, I, was, I got to send him a text. He was really Harmston good. Harmston was great. He's, he was great. He's really funny. And he's also, I was reminded of how good Harmston is when I I listened to, um, uh, oh, I know what you're going to say, that yeah. Burrill and Steve Gillespie's Yeah, Burrill's show. podcast. Mm-hmm. So those guys do a podcast called uh, Help Me Out Again. Well, it was the Writer's Block Writer's or Block, something. They course. renamed it, but yeah. They did rename it? Yes, they did. What'd they name it? 
Uh, I Anything have, is better than the most pedestrian. I know. Name. In fact, Robert Burrell was here last week, and I brought that up that you teased him about yeah. it, saying, "Great show, impossible to find." Yeah, I actually was. I actually was trying to help promote it, and I couldn't find it. Com- Comedy Mainline. Is comedy the, Mainline is the name of the show now. Okay, comedy it's a great Mainline. podcast. It's yeah. a great, if you're a comedy, if you're watching this, you're a comedy nerd. Yeah. So go find this one because it's great. You can, you can. It's probably at this point, it's probably easier to just search Robert Burrill. Yes, uh, and then you can pull it up. It's a great concept. It's you bring jokes and premises that you like that aren't really working or you haven't really found a way to to you know develop them yeah. yet. And they pile in, and you guys, it's like a writer's room. Yeah. So, you know, you, you were saying you listened to Tim on that show. Yeah, I listened I did to not, Tim. I have not heard that one yet. As a, as a, as a, to figure out what the hell the podcast is before I was the guest. Yeah. So I listened to Brian Miller and Tim Harmston. And then I went back and I listened to Todd Glass, who's a crazy genius, and yes. a few other people. And uh, it's a great podcast. And those guys are really funny and had some great ideas. And actually, preparing to do that. And then doing the work with them for that was one of the steps in my process this year. Yeah, I bet. It was really cool because I had the deadline of, well, first of all, I had to pick some premises to send them. Yeah. And then you do that ahead of time. And then on the podcast, you guys are riffing. And and I wanted to bring new jokes since I sent it to them. Oh, okay. And then they had good ideas, and that became a part of the whole arc of the thing. So we worked on... Uh, Here's a teaser for you. The Robert Burrell's favorite premise of mine was that I had a uh, a fantasy when I was in eighth grade, a recurring erotic fantasy about my English teacher, which is perfectly normal. But here's the twist. This is true. We were forced to perform sexual acts on each other at gunpoint. <laughs> yeah, that's the right response. <laughs> so I sent this premise to them and... Robert Burrell was like, oh, pl- oh, I love this one. This is the one. This is the one we're going to work on the most. So that actually is a piece that is still, uh, I'm still trying to figure out where the beats are. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, again, we'll, come come watch the show. I'm, yeah. wor- I'm, I'm working on it now. Oh, that is, that is so fantastic. It's a true story, and I don't know how, where it came from. I think I just wanted her to be off the hook morally. Right? Because it wouldn't be right. She's 30. You can't. I'm 13. She can't. But if it's not her fault and she secretly loved it, well, now everyone's <laughs> now, we're, now everyone's okay again. <laughs> That's the premise. Who are you checking with right now? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you started talking about that, like the teacher, that the student teacher that I had the hots for when I was in sixth grade immediately came to mind. Oh, yeah. Everyone has this situation, oh. or at least the beginning of this situation. <laughs> Miss Hernandez. <laughs> Miss Hernandez, see? Yeah, she, she was working part-time at chi Chi's at the time. <laughs> what does that mean? Nothing. <laughs> Just that I remember it from a long-ass time ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Miss Hernandez. And she gave us hugs on her last day. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, see? And I remember that as Everyone well. Everyone has this uh, mm. coming-of-age story. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Who knew, huh? Yeah. Hey, uh, we just did the 4th of July. Did you do anything fun for the 4th of July? Did you watch the uh, hot dog eating contest? Watch fireworks? <laughs> I did not. What's your favorite thing? I did end up going to the pool with the family for a lot. Our new apartment complex is, our apartment's pretty, it's fine, but the pool area is great. Okay. And it has good internet, and it has these little fire pits, and so we spent the day there. It was cool. And that building, this is so random, but- it's a three-story building that's it's like an indoor-outdoor gym uh-huh. that's connected to the pool. That's the best thing about the complex. And for whatever reason, it's the tallest building in like a mile radius, which is so random in a fairly big city of yeah. Venice, California. But so we went up on the rooftop to watch the fireworks. 12-year-old and I, and it was like it was so cool. Nothing was super close. But it was 360 degrees of all these little towns around L.A. having their own little shows. Awesome. It was pretty cool. Somebody in Minnesota uh, gave me a similar story. Uh, they were in, like, the south metro here, and they're up on a big hill. They were like, I could see them from Apple Valley and Lakeville and yeah. whatever other town is down there. I, I like, didn't plan awesome. it that way, but it was pretty cool. It's a neat way to do it. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was nice. Good. And neither of us f- let let off fireworks and lost a finger or anything? No, no, no that's I don't. Good. Mess with, I'm blind in one eye. I don't mess with fireworks. <laughs> Are you? You're yeah. blind in one eye. Mostly, yeah. Oh. And deaf in one ear. Same side? Same side, which is actually, 
that's the great part is I could put my face in the pillow and goodbye world. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's when I got to get up in the morning, I get a little nervous. Am I going to hear the alarm? But, uh, but yeah, I can really clock out. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever slept through your alarm till somebody, till uh, oh, your significant yeah. uh, other like taps you to roll yeah, over? It's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> But I'll take it. Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> that is so funny. Did uh, <laughs> We should mention that while people... So you're here at Acme through the weekend with yep. Brian and Mo doing shows. And uh, Pete Lee, one of our favorites here at Acme, is he, when he was here earlier this year, we talked a lot about the special he was recording. And now that special... It's going to be on Showtime this Friday night. Oh, that's great. Yes. So uh, buy your tickets to come see Kostaki. Oh, that's and great. And then when you get home later that night or over the weekend or whatever, then watch Pete on uh, Showtime. Good plugs. Post about it. Share your experiences. Congrats, Pete. Pete's yeah. had a really good run lately. Well, yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. So it's we're very, ha- very, very happy for Pete Lee, and that is happening this Friday on Showtime. I want to – so something I did – I don't even know why I thought of this, but I went on eBay – and I put in your name, Kostaki. On eBay? eBay. Oh, I'm fascinated to hear what this is going to be. Yeah. So Signed headshot? There aren't. Okay. I have purchased Jeff Cesario's coming back later this year. I bought a old headshot of his on <laughs> eBay. <laughs> that I think actually was uh, from one of his Showtime specials way you know, back in the 80s. And I bought uh, a, a Jeff Cesario headshot that I'm going to bring out when oh, he's here that's in a great. few months. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it even has like some notes on the back from like the original owner of this thing. Oh. I don't know who Signed I Signed CD. There are some of those. So there's uh, like your CD, yeah, autographed copy of Econo Monologues. Oh yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> that one's twenty nine ninety nine with free shipping. In case you want yourself a copy. <laughs> There's somebody in the UK selling a, a Kostaki CD. We've got the Come On It's Joke CD is on here. Oh, yeah. We got the uh, Mission Economopolis CD. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they're all here. Various prices, $50, $15, $65. $65 for a, a Kostaki CD? Yeah, plus shipping. I literally don't have a way to play a CD. <laughs> Do you wait for the rental car? I don't. It's it's over. <laughs> CDs are. Who's selling CDs? So I have something that I'm going to tie in with that actually. <laughs> but here's here's what I want to get to. There is a signed three by five index card, <laughs> autographed by comedian Kostaki Economopoulos. Four bucks. No. One dollar. No, not not even close. Twelve fifty. Thirty three dollars and seventy five cents or best offer. <laughs> Plus three fifty shipping. Can you imagine the balls? Three fifty shipping mm-hmm. for an index card? Yeah. You put a regular stamp on that. Now let's 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 see. Is this your actual signature? Oh yeah, that is me. What is that from? It says it's dated nineteen ninety seven. This is so bizarre. Right? It never occurred to me to look this up. No. There's, then there's a picture of the back of the card, nothing on the back. I'm gonna go look at I'm gonna go look at this. This is fascinating. Yeah. You know you should you should uh <laughs> you should message this person and like try to like really lowball them and go, <laughs> look, it's me. <laughs> I can write a hundred of these tonight. Yeah, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> I'll trade you 10 of these from 2021. You know what I'll do? For this I'm going to write 100 of these and flood the market. Yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you don't give me everything I demand, i I'm flooding sell the these market. for 99 cents, motherfucker. Oh, that's so funny. I'm flooding the market. Free shipping. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I'll still make 50 cents a piece. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, 350 for shipping on an index card. <laughs> uh, that's... <laughs> and that's charging a little higher uh, than necessary. Um, I don't know where I put it here, but I, you know, Facebook does that memories thing. Oh yeah, I love know? that. It'll be, like, yeah, I like it too. And they'll, um, my, I had one from the other day, and it was from 2009, and my status was, big decision today. Should I buy the new Jayhawks uh, album on CD or MP3? <laughs> mm-hmm. What'd you go with? I'm not. I think I, I think I went CD. Yeah. <laughs> I think I went CD back then. But I can tell you now, there's no, there's I, 
It, yeah, I don't buy CDs anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. But that was a thing that was, I had to like make a decision. It was a thing. Hmm. <laughs> am I going to stick with my old ways or step into the future? <laughs> This is going to catch on streaming and stuff. That'll catch on, right? <laughs> probably. It's yeah. Probably going to make it. I'll always have access to this stuff. Sure, 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 <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> well, congrats on being back. Well, good luck with the new material. Thanks, man. And the it's podcast. A, such a pleasure, yeah. Thanks, and, man. Um, and I will continue to, uh, I have thrown out, a, it's been a little bit, but I have thrown out a line or two to all pro lines, and I'm going to uh, Yeah, yeah, that's right. Try Thanks a little harder. That. i got to keep, it's, uh, I go through waves where I'm like spending a lot of time on these social media pages, and the others where I'm like, uh Right. I gotta stay away. I so. totally hear you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Kostaki. Thank you, man. Cheers.